Welcome back to another debriefing. Please hit that subscribe button, notification bell, like, share. The issue about this, though, is Ukraine's drones have profoundly changed tomorrow's battlefields. The war in Ukraine is the first large-scale, high-intensity military conflict in which both sides have extensively deployed different types of drones to attain different military effects. European countries should probably take note to adopt a holistic approach towards hostility-piloted drones and anti-drone defenses. That was the conclusion last year of Dominika Kunaratova senior researcher on the global security team at the Center for Security Studies in Zurich in a paper published in Policy Perspectives. The following are the key takeaways that veteran military battlefield strategists and analytical futurists tend to agree on. The war in Ukraine has begun to dramatically sculpt how militaries are thinking about drones and normalizing their use for both armed and tactical intelligence collection, especially in the context of how their use will change from counterterrorism to conventional warfare, their use against extremist groups and non-state actors, and rogue nation states. Already, military doctrinal thinking regarding the future use of drones within its multi-domain warfighting stratagem is undergoing tactical and strategic reimagining, supposing, and assessing regarding what it means for the military's defensive and offensive requirements, which incorporates the conclusions of simulated scenarios involving U.S. military involvement. We used to, and still do, call it wargaming, but now we do it with the aid of pretty amped up simulations powered by far more amped up supercomputers. In other words, one specific situation wouldn't necessarily require the deployment of a General Atomics MQ-9 Reaper, but rather a smaller, more discreet, and low decibel level UAV or drone to deliver whatever intelligence collection or weapons package the situation requires. Indeed, Kunertova wrote that, quote, the main takeaway from the European countries from drone warfare in Ukraine is drone diversity, noting that different categories of drones have different military effects. European countries, as well as Pacific Rim Western Democratic allies, also need to adjust their drone acquisition strategies to include a full spectrum of drones for very specific mission needs requirements as illustrated above, but to also better integrate a variety of very specialized smaller drones to serve land forces, intelligence, surveillance, and recon capabilities for battlefield combat requirements. And this must be over the horizon thinking that is firmly based on solid futuristic based analysis of technologies currently in development both commercially and as classified weapons and intelligence collection platforms. European and Pacific Rim Western democracies also must begin to invest in not only their underdeveloped traditional air defenses, but also given the changing operational dynamics in the lower airspace, including the suborbital and geosynchronistic orbital airspace, design and rigor rigorously test effective scalable countermeasures capabilities against drones, especially smaller drones and swarm drone attacks. Swarm drone attacks pose a very tangible threat. As a Congressional Research Service report issued last July pointed out, suppression and destruction of enemy air defenses is the first and most dangerous part of an air campaign because attacking aircraft generally face enemy air defense networks at their full capability. In addition to expendability, drones offer several advantages for such missions. Large numbers of small drones engaging enemy air defenses could overwhelm these defenses and compel an adversary to use many of its weapons against small, comparatively low-value targets. Such swarming tactics could also direct many attacking aircraft to the target and confuse responders because most modern air defense systems are designed for combating crude aircraft. Drones can create a novel problem for enemy forces, particularly when operated in unconventional ways. These methods include rapid changes in speed or direction, high G loadings that would not be possible with a human on board, 
and electronic measures can also all make drones uh, appear as larger, more threatening aircraft to radar and other sensors, further complicating a defender's responses. Nevertheless, Ukraine's military has proven to be the perfectly undeniable example of how ingenu ingenuity born of necessity can quickly re-engineer, engineer, retool, and specifically adapt tailor-made innovations to existing platforms with nothing more than cots and brawn. This video is undeniable authentication of how the Ukrainians have done this so successfully, while also demonstrating how their drones nearly noiseless on the ground at relative high altitudes can precision drop explosives filled shells on Russian tanks, more often than not directly, directly, directly into an open hatch, a hole in one, we call it, but also how their use of drones have been equally as effective at destroying other Russian military vehicles and targets in rapid succession, including exposed individual infantry soldiers which, as we've disturbingly witnessed this winter in Ukraine, has had a bloody effect on Russian soldiers, clearly suffering from extreme hypothermia. Drones also do not alone have decisive war-winning capability. However, the war in Ukraine shows that they have become a significant factor in conventional warfare. From persistent eyes in the sky and flying missile launchers to small, stealthy drone scouts, the qualitative and quantitative scale of their use in war is unprecedented. While at the same time, the effect of drones on the changing character of warfare should not be overestimated. Machines are still far from replacing human fighting. But drones can transform the way humans go about warfare. In addition to their use as weapons, drones have brought about an important evolutionary change in their less spectacular supporting roles, especially in providing battle space awareness for small teams and even individual soldiers. The widespread use of multiple types of drones by Ukraine has clearly evidenced that drones achieve different but desired effects depending on the type of the platform and payload that is used. Large drones, for example, carrying rocket-propelled high explosives packed standoff missiles can be devastating under conditions of air superiority, but small and many drones have also established their abilities to deliver decisive situational awareness about Russia's infantry, on-the-move units, and especially pinpoint artillery targeting. In addition, so-called loitering drones carrying munitions have also proven to be a very hard to defend against weapons platform, especially when there is inadequate air defense technology fielded, an important problem we previously addressed in the matter of swarm drones. Suffice it to say, however, clearly, the efficacy, convenience, efficiency, and multifunctionality of small drones, whether commercial off the shelf or as a platform designed and produced in secret, spawns perhaps inestimable military capabilities on the cheap. Drones, without question, have made the most significant difference due to their enabling functions. For example, they have reduced the firing cycles of artillery from about half an hour to just a few minutes at best. Second, drone scouts demonstrably can provide unprecedented battle space awareness down to the level of infantry soldiers, allowing them to spot enemy positions and to monitor the movements of troops without risking the lives of human special forces. The gamut of the types and sizes of drones used in warfare and intelligence collection are unquestionably force multipliers. They provide a combination of factors that gives both personal and weapon systems the wherewithal to achieve much grander achievements than would have been possible without them. In addition to existing U.S. Defense Department concepts of operation for drones of all kinds, there are several experimental concepts relating to the future use of drones that are in development, which include system of systems, AI-enabled manned-unmanned teaming, swarming, and lethal autonomous weapon systems. Eventually, these concepts are more likely to overlap as they and the technologies assembled or associated with them mature. This report only scratches the surface regarding the use of drones in combat and intelligence gathering operations, as it has illustrated vividly. Both their built-in and ad hoc functionalities in the battlefields in Ukraine have proven this. So we will be talking a lot more about tactical strategic use of drones. Thanks for listening. As always, stay safe, well, and frosty out there. See you next time.